consider subscribing. We'll start with the washing. What did we say in the morning? Can I move, cameraman? Okay, if I move, no problem. What did we say about the washing in the beginning? We said that it is governed by a general hadith. Wash it by using water and scissors. Now we have the stuff with us. The scissors, the kafur, the mask. Sandal, these are all substances, and inshallah, after the session in the break, I don't know about the sisters you, you uh, provide them with a sample, we'll be able to smell it, to see it, because it gives you uh, uh, a closer insight when you uh, touch it, you smell it, you know how it uh, feels and looks like. From the sunnah, we have sidr, we have the water, we have the kafu, and generally speaking any kind of perfume now how to do this differs from one place to the other the general concept is there so if you see something is done here this does not mean it's definitely has to be cloned and done exactly in Morocco in Syria in Pakistan in India in Indonesia in America we're going to do the traditional way which is using the bucket and using something to pour water. Nowadays in Saudi Arabia, for example, I believe here and elsewhere, instead of that, you have the shower. Instead of doing it the easy way, there are much easier way of doing it, but we will do the basics. So if you go to somewhere and you see them using the showers, no, oh, this is bid'ah. It's not permissible. No, it's not. It is. Because this is part of washing the deceased. How you wash him? This is up to you. The eyes stated now, I remember. You need to prepare a few things. So it's best that you prepare the things <coughs> that you need to washing the deceased or the dead person. Now for the person who is doing the actual washing, what does he need? First of all, a pair of gloves. And preferably that these, do, do you have to have gloves? No, but as long as we have it, it's more convenient rather than putting a piece of cloth and using it. This is hygienic for washing. Now, you can use the gloves without any cloth because you are not directly touching the body. But when you, if you try washing your body with a piece of uh, a plastic glove, you'd find it very difficult. And therefore, it is recommended for hygiene uh, uh, issues that you wear the gloves and then you use the piece of, uh, of cloth. Can we see the piece of cloth you're gonna use? So this is the piece of cloth, any piece of cloth. It doesn't have to have something to be wrapped around your wrist. It doesn't have to be of a certain shape, something that is convenient for you. Of course, as recommended, we have to have something to put on your face so that it prevents smells from coming to you and maybe uh, uh, harming you or making you feel uncomfortable. Now the person who's washing the deceased is going to have a lot of yeah, I mean, water and, and from the body and maybe something that is not pure coming from the body and coming to him. So it is best to wear something. Of course this is a simulation. Huh? This is for making cookies, but <laughs> usually, usually, in actual, you would find it really uh, uh, covering the, the body. Like the one they use in butcher, butcher houses. Yeah, it, of course, it's, it's a different situation, but because they deal with blood and with slaughtering, they, ha they have to have their themselves uh, properly covered. We said that it is recommended to have big scissors, uh, nail clippers and a small scissor of um, a comb will do to trim the mustaches if needed. Now, we brought, may Allah have mercy on our deceased. <laughs> and may Allah grant him life after we finish. I mean, I mean. Okay, what do we do first? Yeah, tell me. Okay, first of all, we 
Of course, when we bring the deceased, now watch out. There are two methods. Whether we do the whole process on the same table, the washing, the shrouding, and take him away. Or we have, do we have two different, uh, we don't, okay. We will do it on the same one. In Saudi Arabia, we do it on a separate. After washing him, we remove the body to another bed, which is the bed we will be carrying him to the uh, graveyard and do it. But in some countries, they use the same bed. They worship him on top of it, and then they shroud him on top of it, and then they take him on the same place. But the first thing to do, we have the deceased. He's got his clothes on. What should we do? Remove the clothes. We have to remove his clothes. Can we remove his clothes now? We can't, because then we will look at his aura. So what should we do? We should cover, cover. his aura from the navel to the uh, knees. Now, sometimes you may bring a piece of cloth that is this long. This is not recommended because the minute you do this, everything is going to be exposed. So it has to be quite long from the sides. Okay, what do we do next? No. Why waste money? We try to remove the clothes. Depending on how soft his limbs are. So if it is soft and it's possible, we have to take off his clothes. Most the times it's a little bit stiff and it's, it's very hard to bend the arms or... So in this case, we tear the clothes starting from the sleeves. Are you going to do it for real? Okay. <laughs> That's good. And likewise, and take off all of his clothes, bearing in mind it is... No, this is wrong. See what you've done? You've exposed the body. So you have to, all the time, do this. Your eyes are not looking. Because you don't want to expose the body. All the time, looking up and washing and doing... And you don't need to look. And you have to be real discreet. Because this is something that our religion extremely takes care of. We removed all of his clothes. So what do we do now? First thing, we have to... If I, if I want to make wudu, and I have to answer the call of natures, nature, which one I do first? First thing I answer the call of nature. So we have to clean his stomach and make sure that there's nothing coming out wash his private parts and clean it and then we start with the usul. So, is this in the sunnah? Yes. No. The sunnah says wash him. So if we start by washing him and cleaning him and ensuring nothing is coming out, this does the job. But there is an etiquette stated by the scholars. It is not a must, but this etiquette has been practiced and proven to work. So the first thing, now of course, this Brother is alive. If he wasn't alive, you will see the limbs are relaxed and you can tell. This shows he's alive. Even if he's asleep, this is how his foot's going to be. Once he's dead, alas, all loosened up. So we will start by cleaning his stomach. And this is done by making him sit halfway, not all the way, and gently pressing on his stomach. You can press with your palm, or you can press with your arm. Not with your elbow, with your, with your arm, yes. Gently going downwards, and this makes whatever is not clean coming out. If there's something to be released, it will be released. And then we bring the water, so that we can remove all of this, and we clean the private parts. Cleaning the private parts, is done by separating the legs of the deceased and again without looking from underneath he goes and cleans the front and the back side of the private parts and he washes it thoroughly the water <coughs> is excessively thrown so that anything that is there goes and it doesn't leave an impact on you as washing you try your best to wash thoroughly without looking now i've seen everything huh? <laughs> 
because he has lifted it highly, the cover should not be lifted. So even if he does this, it's covered. No one can see from this side. Point of importance. Who can attend this? Who can attend walking the streets? Only. Only people involved in the process. So one says, Wow, it's nice. No. Can I do this? <laughs> and both of them use no? No. No. Can I wash the body in an open place and people from the balconies and throwing flowers and what the fuck? No, this is an, a discreet process. Out of respect, not even the father or the son. Of course, we're not talking about the Holy Ghost. Not even his father. <laughs> nor his son, because the relatives can say, and I want to watch my father, he's my brother. No, you have no right. If you're not involved in the process, get out. So two would do, three would do, more than that it would be a sacrifice. <coughs> we wash, clean. What do I do with the cloth that I clean the private parts? Okay, I get rid of it. I wrap it and I put it in a plastic bag. Uh, along with the things that I have to dispose of. Bear in mind that I use the left hand. In Islam, we use the right hand for honoring things, for eating, for drinking, for giving things, for exchanging things. Left hand is used for things that are not so honored. Now, we begin, before washing the body, also we take a look at the fingernails, if they need clipping, it's too long, we clip them. We took, take a look at his mustache, if it's too long, we cut it. We take a look at his armpit, if it's too long, we either pluck it, or if it's difficult, we shave it. Before we go on, it is extremely important to know that these are things from the ministry. They either are mandatory or highly recommended. For clipping the nails, the Prophet gave us 40 days, I saw the Quran. Imam Nawawi and other scholars say that not necessarily I wait for 40 days. Sometimes I may clip them after 10 days because they are excessively long. Yesterday or the day before, I don't remember. I, 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 I was praying and a brother next to me was praying with this fingernail this long. And the rest are clean. And it was Juma, so I could not talk to him after Juma. I think he was for it. He left. What are you doing? If you ask, I ask so many people in, in, in where I come from, when I say, I think this is not allowed. If you ask, I need it because I have downgrowth in my hair. And sometimes I pick my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need a healthy little wife and cooking. <laughs> this is not, not, not permissible at all. Again, when I go to the gym or to, or to the swimming pool, some of the brothers, when they take off their shirt, they have, you know, jungles of ideas. <laughs> this is ugly. This is unislamic. <laughs> I don't uh, remove the chair. I don't want to be like women. Subhanallah. The, the, the master of all men, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he instructed me. And he used to do this. And whenever he raised his hand, he was white, clean, and, 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 and no hair in it. So every Muslim must remove his armpit. He must remove his pubic hair. This is not something I mean, 